What is up, viewer out there watching this video, Lego Rocks back here with another season mode here in NHL 18. This time, we're taking a look at the Russian powerhouse of a team. Excuse me, not Russian. The Soviet powerhouse of a team. This is the Soviet Red Army National Team. And the way I assorted these lines is kind of stacked. I'm not gonna lie. If you want to take a look at the team that we got ourselves here, this is the 1982-1983 World Championship team for the Soviets. And I use this team specifically because I could have used any one of the CSKA Moscow teams in the early 80s, maybe the 70s, or any one of these Soviet national teams. The Lake Placid team comes to mind, but then all the other gold medal winning teams in the 80s come to mind as well. In the 70s, they got guys like Mikhailov, Petrov, the legendary Karlamov, Vikulov, but going into the 80s, coach Tikhonov of the CSKA Moscow and the national team as well got themselves a brand new squad that would dominate hockey for the entire decade. Vladimir Krutov, Igor Larionov, Sergei Makarov, and on defense, Alexei Kasatonov and Vyacheslav Vitisov. This was the green unit, the big five right here. This was a unit that put up all the points, they scored so many goals, and it was just a complete powerhouse. It was a complete powerhouse, and I just wanted to get into a little bit of history here, because I recognize that not a lot of people would be familiar with what I'm talking about here. So basically what this is, is the Soviet national team. That's it. This is the national team. It's like a Team Canada, kind of. But what's interesting about this is back in the Soviet Union in the 80s, there was one team in the Soviet Hockey League that was so good that they just dominated every single night. And that team still exists today. It is the CSKA Moscow team. Now, this team was so good that if you look at this roster of players that we have right now, this is the National Soviet team. There are only seven players out of this 20-man roster that were not playing for CSKA Moscow. So if you look at this Soviet National team, and you look at the goalies as well, Vladislav Tretiak's in here, the only players that did not play on CSKA Moscow were the backup goaltender Vladimir Mishkin, then Sergei Kasputin, Helmets Balderis, Sergei Shepolev, Alexander Svortskov, Alexander Maltsev, as well as Vasily Parvukin. These are the seven players who did not play on CSKA Moscow, but they were here on the national team with a lot of players from CSKA Moscow. It's like if we had the Pittsburgh Penguins send 13 players to Team Canada, and Team Canada only had 20 players. Imagine it's like that. So you could just get the idea of what a dominant team CSKA Moscow was in the early 80s. Looking at their records, in 1980-81, in 44 games played, CSKA Moscow got 39 wins, 3 losses, and 6 ties. Going over to 1981-82, in 47 games played, they got 40 wins, 4 losses, and 3 ties. In 1983, 44 games played, 40 wins, 3 losses, 1 tie, and then 1983-84, this was their big season. In 44 games played, the CSKA Moscow only lost once. And that team was carried by this unit as well, Krutov, Larionov, Makarov, and then Fetisov and Kasatonov. So really, the CCCP Soviet National Red Army Hockey Club it was consisted mostly of CSKA Moscow players, and they also got themselves the coach as well. It's just a few really standout players on other teams like Helmets Balderis and Sergei Kasputin who are placed onto this national team too. But overall, there was a period in the 80s where this national team hadn't lost a game in two years. If you want to go over to the 1981 Canada Cup, this is something that the NHL kind of made themselves because, hey, NHL players aren't allowed to go to the Olympics. In 1981 for the Canada Cup, Team Canada played the Soviet Union in the final game. It was more or less this roster. There were a few other guys that weren't on this team here in NHL 18, like Nikolai Drozdetsky, for example. But for the most part, a lot of this core here was present at that 1981 
Canada Cup Finals against Team Canada. Team Canada had players like Ray Bork, Mike Bossy, Marcel Dion, Wayne Gretzky, Guy Lafleur, Gilbert Perrault. Team Canada lost in the Canada Cup Finals to this team right here, 8 to 1. This team was an absolute powerhouse. Scotty Bowman, as a coach, praised this team heavily for how you could not get around their systems. Wayne Gretzky commented on how you can't beat these guys. They're just too smart. Igor Larionov, in the 80s, growing up as a hockey player in the Soviet Union, people compared Larionov before he came over to the NHL, before all of that. Soviet Larionov. People said that Larionov was as good as Gretzky in terms of how smart he was able to play the game. Another player who was really smart was Vladimir Krutov, the tank. The guy who was only 5'9", 194 pounds. He was an absolute monster physically, and he, along with Larionov, could fool nine guys on the ice at the same time. Five enemy opponents and four of their own teammates. Makarov was the sniper. Legendary Soviet sniper. Goals, goals, goals everywhere. Viktor Zhlukov here on the second line also played for the CSKA Moscow team. He was really good as well. Sergei Kasputin with the 90 overalls over here. Helmets Balderis, who's famous for being the oldest drafted player to ever play in the NHL. He was drafted at like 36 or 37 or something. He's here. Vyacheslav Baikov, Alexander Svortskov, and Sergei Shepelev make up a stacked third line. And if you guys think that I'm stacking the overalls here... Think again, because this team, in comparison to their competition and how good this team was, this is appropriate. If you make Wayne Gretzky in the NHL 18 video game, you're not going to make him 85 overall because, oh, if Gretzky played today, he wouldn't be as skilled. No, you do it in comparison to their competition at the time. So if you make Wayne Gretzky in this video game, you make him a 99 overall. That's what I did here. Because all of these players, if you played this team against Team Canada in the 1981 Canada Cup Finals, this team better be a team that would be able to beat Wayne Gretzky, Bossy, Perot, all these guys 8-1. So this team has to be stacked, and this team was stacked. It was the best system of hockey played in the 80s. It revolutionized the idea of passing the puck. And then if you go over to the defensive core over here, Kasatanov had a really good tenure with New Jersey alongside of Fedosov. Fedosov played alongside of Larionov in Detroit, won themselves a cup. They made up the good Russian five over there, along with Sergei Fedorov, Kozlov, and Konstantinov in Detroit. But here... This big unit over here, this big five, they were known as the green unit because they would wear green jerseys in practice. Sergei Starikov is over here. Vasily Pervikin, these guys both got a lot of points as defensemen in the Soviet leagues. Vladimir Zubkov and Irek Gimeyev are also players who played on CSKA there down here as well. And then the goaltenders. A lot of people are going to get mad at this, but Vladislav Tretiak I have is a 95 overall. And the reason for Tretiak being a 95 overall is because he was, hands down, the best goaltender to never play in the NHL. Hands down. People said at the time, the late 70s, early 80s, in his prime, they said that he was the best goaltender in the world. This was a top-class quality goaltender, playing in an era where... Soviets could not come over, and he was a little bit older than all the other guys like Larionov and Fedosov, so he didn't have a chance to. But, in that 1981 Canada Cup, Vladislav Tretiak posted a 9.47 save percentage and a 1.33 goals against average. He was an absolute beast. If you want to go to Tretiak's individual stats, going over to 1980-81, playing for CSKA Moscow, 18 games played, a 1.78 goals against average. Going over to the next season, 81-82, 39 games played, a 170 goals against average. 82-83, 29 games, 1.38 goals against average. And then in the World Championships, in 82-83 for the Soviet Union, 7 games played, 0 0.57 
goals against average and a 972 save percentage. Vladislav Tretiak was a monster in net. You could not beat him. So if we go over the rest of the team, this is what we got. This is what our power play looks like. It's interesting because Helmets Balderas is the only player on this team with a right-handed shot. So, yeah, I have him here on this side. But overall, um, this is just the 82-83 World Championship team. Of course, they won gold because they were a beast. But overall, this team is interchangeable with other versions of CSKA Moscow, as well as other versions of the Red Army Soviet Hockey Squad for the national team. But this is what I have here. It kind of keeps the core of a lot of the players that did have success in other teams. For example, Helmut Balder is playing, um, because he was from Latvia, which was a part of the Soviet Union at the time, he was playing for Dynamo Riga, I believe, and he was an absolute monster there. 60-point seasons in 40-something games played. But this is the big one right here. Krutov, Larionov, Makarov, Kasatonov, Fedosov. This is the green unit. They will be getting a lot of points. So what I did was I took them, put them into NHL 18, we will simulate throughout this season and see how the Soviet Union Hockey Club would do today. If, of course, they still maintain their status as being the best hockey team ever. And I say ever, because these guys beat Wayne Gretzky, and Wayne Gretzky commented on how he couldn't beat them. Of course. Let's get our simulation underway, guys. I'll see you guys in a few seconds. What a disappointing season, guys. 13 losses and 6 overtime losses. If this was the team playing in the 80s, Viktor Tikhonov, the coach, would have been pissed. Because any form of a loss was unacceptable. Of course, though, looking at this, playing an 82-game season, this is awesome. 63 wins, 13 losses, 6 overtime losses, and 132 points in total. This team absolutely dominated. And if we go over to the points, let's see how things played out. Igor Larionov with 87 points. Wow, that's great. Not expecting anything less from the professor himself, Igor Larionov scored 87 points. What I really like, though, looking at this, we got no 30 goal scorers. I really like that, and I like it because it just means that the goals have been spread out. Because there's no doubt in my mind that we're first in goals for. But the fact that we don't have one guy getting all the goals, it just defines us as a team with incredible depth. Look at this right here. We got ourselves eight guys who got 20 goals. One guy at 19, two at 18, one at 17. You could basically say we were at 12. And if you go over to the points, Larionov, Makarov, Krutov, yup, it is that first line, 87, 73, 69 points. Baikov is here, Balderas is here, Shepilev, Kasputin on the third line, and then the defense, Kasatanov and Fedosov, 50 points each. That is great. But all of these guys were interchangeable. There were some years where Larionov was a point per game, and in the next season, he was at 20 points. It's because the priority and the playing time given to all these players was spread out throughout the years, but overall, all of these guys had skill. So if you look, some of these guys have really strong seasons followed by weak seasons, but that's because they all had talent, and they were all being interchanged. Let's go to the rest of the league and just hope that Stamkos and Kucherov are not number one and two again. And it is another Russian, Alexander Ovechkin with 99 points, Sagan with 90, Tarasenko, another Russian, 87, tied with Larionov. So Larionov, third in points. That's actually the best result we've had, I think. That's pretty good. Where's Stamkos and Kucherov? Stamkos, yes, down here, 76 points. And then Kucherov, 76 as well, yes. No back-to-back 50-goal -back seasons for both of these guys. Absolutely incredible. So Larionov is up here, 87 points. Where is the next one? Um, Keep on going down here. Makarov, 73 points. And then if you go to goals, we're, we're, we're nowhere near. Oh, it's, Jesus, 70, 67. We're nowhere near here because, as I said... We got really good goal distribution from our team, but Ovechkin, my goodness. 
Going to assists though, you can see Larianov is third over here, and then going down a little bit more, um, are there any other? Here, here's Makarov. Yeah, that's, um, that's very, very good for us. And then going over to the defense, let's see, so Eric Carlson is over here, and then Kasatanov is down here, and then Fedosov with 51 points over here. But, as you can see, Kasatanov and Fedosov, that plus minus is looking really good for them. So I think Kasatanov might actually come away with winning the Norris, because um, the plus minus really does play a part of it. I think it's multiplied, so yeah, we'll see a little bit later into the video. Going over to goaltenders, though, uh, wins. Treciak is tied with Connor Hallibuck, but in shutouts, he beats him. By a lot. In save percentage, he edges him, and in goals against average, this is expected out of Vladislav Treciak. Anything above a 2 is disappointing for him. All these guys with 2-something, Treciak with a 1.89. That should be like, yeah, so it's first and second, Mishkin and Treciak, and then for save percentages, um... Mishkin is first, too. Yeah, 939, and then Treciak is down here. But amongst all these other guys who got wins, yeah, it's Treciak. Treciak is getting himself the Vesna, as he should, because he was a phenomenal goaltender, arguably the best in his era. Going over to all the wins, yep, 63 over here. Goals 4, we got 300 goals 4, so that's good, I really like that. We're definitely first, though. There's no other team that would get more than us, yes. Alright, we're over here. Goals against, yep, we're over there too. Power plays, uh, oh, power play goals, yeah. Power play percentage, we might be up there too, yep, we're first. Uh, shorthanded goals against, uh, we got one. Okay, so we're tied with the best in the league. And then penalty kill, I don't think this is really good. Uh, yeah, penalty kills down here, but shorthand goals for 11. Really good for us. Our home record, as you can see, um, was pretty good, but our away record was really where we got the majority of our wins. So yeah, we traveled really well, but at home, eh, not so much. It must be the jet lag. But let's simulate through the playoffs here. I just hope that we, we don't get l eliminated in the first round. Please, just give us a playoff win. Okay, stop the simulation, stop the simulation. We're gonna just slow sim the whole way through. We can, we can dominate the Oilers, right? Oh my god, they're actually gonna, okay. Okay, yeah, there we go, we came back, we came back. We came back and we beat the Edmonton Oilers. If we get ourselves two wins, then we will do a quick sim on the rest of the season, or on the rest of the series, I believe. So, yeah, let's simulate our way through here. Come on, come on. Soviets, please, Edmonton. Edmonton, oh my goodness, the Soviets are shut out by Cam Talbot. This is why I needed to do the slow sim, guys, like, I can't deal with this anymore. Playoff hockey is so weird in this video game. If this team loses, I'm gonna be so mad. Alright, first period of game three, Edmonton is up 1-0. 12 shots on net, Cam Talbot is shutting the door. Second period, here we go. Here we go. Vasilyev on the fourth line is getting things done. Let's simulate the third period quickly. Just go through it, man, please. Here we go. Penalty. Oh my goodness, we couldn't capitalize on the power play. Or get to 10. Oh no. Oh no. Okay. Get to six. Get to six without a goal. Okay. Now get to four without a goal. Okay. Now get to two without a goal. All right. Get down to zero. The Soviets are up in the series. Okay, Mikhail Vasilyev, you absolutely came in clutch. Jeez. The top line, Fas um, Fedosov, Kasatanov, Krutov, Larionov, Makarov, they aren't seeming to get all the goals that I think they should be able to, but in this game, Svortsov, okay. Okay, another one, Kasatanov, there we go, and Bervikin and Svortskov again. All right. All right, we got a 3-1 series lead. We'll simulate to the end here to game seven. If we get one win, there we go, one nothing. And then we're taking on the Flames in the second round. One loss so far. So you know Viktor Tikhonov really went to work on here because after that three nothing loss, look at this. One goal against, one goal against, zero goals against. Treciak is shutting the door now. All right, game one against Calgary, let's go. All right, two nothing, I like it. Makarov and Kasputin, I like, oh my God. Tretiak, man. Oh my goodness. Okay, let's go. Let's go. Come on, Soviets. Please don't let up a power play goal. All right. Somebody. Fedosov. Larionov. Makarov. Somebody. Please. Okay, if it gets to seven, I'm pressing the X button. 
six, okay, seven, okay. There we go, we got it, yes! I did it! Yes, it worked, it worked. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Vladimir Zubkov, the defensive defenseman on the, on the third pairing, he got it done. All right, all right, overtime. Come on, power play! Sim, I'm slowing the sim, I'm slowing the sim. All right, times two now. Times two. All right, let's get let's get ourselves a goal. Come on, guys. Oh my goodness, we passed it up. We pa Okay, just simulate the rest of the game. Simulate the rest. Yes, here we go. Helmets ball, Darius, in overtime. A good comeback victory for the Soviets. All right, that was just game one. All right, let's simulate game two. If we get ourselves a win, then I'll simulate two more games really quickly by just doing the calendar thing. All right, here we go. One nothing. Bykov. Okay. Oh no! What was that? Trechiak. Trechiak letting in three goals in the in second in the second game. Ah, uh, it happens. It happens. All right, we gotta do this. We gotta do the next one. This is how you gotta win, guys. Like I can't. I can't just like simulate it. Oh my gosh, we're gonna lose this game too, aren't we? Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Five goals! This is what I was talking about, guys! This team is absolutely brilliant! This is it! The first line, Fedosov, Larionov, Larionov, and then Starikov with two empty nets to seal the deal. Three quick goals to put the Soviets up on Calgary. It's a 2-1 series, boys. Let's continue on. Alright, game four. Game four. Let's see. If we take this one, it's a 3-1 to one lead. It's 1-1. One, one. Balderas again. Okay. Furland. Oh my goodness. Please, power play. Oh no, it's over. Alright, come on guys. 21 shots. We can get a little bit more than that, right? 23. Nope, 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 nope. Okay. Alright. Um, oh, slow down the sim. Slow down the sim. Yep. Slow down the sim. Somebody, oh my goodness. If it goes to 7, I'm pressing the X button. Alright. All right, once it's past seven, all right, X button, nope, okay. So we, can, we couldn't get one, we couldn't get one. It's tied, 2-2. Two, two. Jeez, why are we not, like, dominating like we did in the season? Like, 60-something wins, and we can barely squeak wins by Calgary. All right, so in this one, Svortskov, okay, okay. Second period, Balderas and Jluktov, okay, and Balderas again. Shutting the door, Vladislav Tretiak, nice, nice, all right. So we have uh, two more games. Got um, two more games left. Let's just simulate this one really quickly too. I, I I don't think I don't want to have that karma of going into another game seven because it doesn't usually work out for us. Two one. Kasputin gets a goal, but Johnny Gaudreau and others get ones for Calgary. We're doubling them in shots. Come on, come on, Soviet Army, please. Oh no, 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 no. Okay, yep, slow the sim. Slow the sim. Slow the sim. Slow the sim. Okay, if it gets the 7, I'm pressing the X button. If it gets the 7, I'm pressing the X button. Okay, no, we still can't do it. We can't do it. They tied it. It's 3-3. We're going to a game 7 against Calgary. Why? Oh, no. We're going to a game 7 against Calgary. My god. I swear, if we do not win this one... Oh my god, okay, come on, Soviets, come on, Soviets, oh no, it's one nothing. Travis Hamanek on Trechiak, alright, second period, let's go, oh, Grutov, yes, the tank gets to work, two goals in the second period to put the Soviet Union up 2-1, simulate the third, quicks, a 5-on-3, 5-on-4, oh my goodness, we killed it off, no, what? What's going on? What's going on? What's going on? What's going on? Okay, we got we got we got a goal. Okay. Komitov delay of game Kasputin. Oh, I don't like that. I don't like that, guys. What is with this? But somebody gets another goal. Svortskov again. Again. Oh my goodness, we got it. Yes. We're advancing. We're advancing. Alexander Skvortsov on the third line, left wing, 88 overall sniper has just propelled us forward. How many, What? what's our points and stuff like? Let's just go over, um, yeah, let's go over here. What does that look like? Balderas, Baikov, Kasputin, okay, yeah. So Makarov's getting a lot of assists, so that's really good for him. Fedosov, five points. Kasatanov, five points. Krutov, Larion, they're not really showing up, guys. I'm not, okay. You know what? 
You know what? Um, let's let's do some line changes. Let's do some line changes right here. So I want to do something here. Let's put. Let's swap out the second and the third line. It's okay because like our our second line is basically a first line too. But I want to have these guys all here together playing alongside of Kasatonov and Fedosov. Actually, you know what? No, we'll leave these guys up here because these guys will these guys need the minutes. But other than that, that's the only changes we're gonna make going in to the third round. All right, all right. This is a long video. Jeez. Okay, let's simulate up here. See who we got. Minnesota. Okay, Minnesota. Simulate the first game. Simulate the first game here. Two one. Okay. Igor Lary yeah, Igor Larionov, second line. Okay, there we go. We got one. But all right. Yeah. No, they're. Jeez, okay. I don't know what's happening, guys. Why is this, like... Why are the playoffs so different from the regular season? I turned injuries off and everything. We've lost five games already, and we've only won eight. All right, game two. All right, all right. Zhluktov gets a goal in tight. All right, Krutov on the second line. Eric Stahl gets one. Come on, Trechak. Don't let up two. Don't allow three goals in game two for the third series in a row, please. Okay. Make it to 10. There we go. We got to 10. Make it to 8. There we go. We got to 8. Make it to 6. Okay. Power play. Okay. Okay, jeez. Okay. Make it to 1. Make it to 1. All right. Make it to 0. Clutch things up. Perfect, Ken. There you go. There you go. What a great play. 3-1. It is now a tie series. The Soviet Union now rushing into Game 3 in Minnesota. We've played better on the road. So, there we go. There we go, Shepilev and Krutov again, yes, there we go. And then, yes, another two goals, Shepilev and Shepilev! Shepil- oh my goodness, he's getting it done! Sergei Shepilev on the third line with a hat-trick, eight goals! What the hell? Oh my god, he got himself a fourth one! Shepilev with four goals in this game! Four goals, one assist, Baikov, who's the center on that line, one goal, four assists, Alexander Shvortsov, Four points in this one as well. That third line absolutely killed it. And this is what I'm talking about, guys. Each one of these players on this team is fantastic. It's just that the utilization was a little bit iffy. And all of these guys were capable of getting points. It's just that the Makarov, Fatisov, Krutov, Kasatanov, Larionov pairing... They got the most points because they were using the most, but all these guys had skill. And going in to this game, Helmets Balderas puts us up 3-1. It's a 3-1 series, boys. Yes. Let's simulate up to here. Just in case it's a quick win. Okay, no, it's not. Jeez, okay, that was a bad decision. Let's simulate game six right here. See how things play out. Three goals. There we go. Balderas, Starikov, and Baikov. All right, Nino Niederreiter, Komutov, and Komutov, yes. Look at this depth right here. Fourth line right winger, Andre Komutov, 86 sniper, is able to get two. And we are now going to the finals against the Boston Bruins, who have only lost four games this entire playoffs. Okay, this is the closest we've ever been, guys. This is the closest we've ever been to actually winning anything, because, like, we're always getting eliminated, and it sucks. But in game one here in Moscow, Kasputin and Baikov, all right, Vetrano and Marchand, second period, nothing, third period, let's do a quick sim, just press the X button, third period, nothing, okay then, I'm gonna, I'm gonna finish the game, who's gonna win? It's Viktor Baikov, yes, yes, or not Viktor Baikov, um, Vyacheslav Baikov, Viktor is Zhluktov, right, third line center is able to get that final goal, and wow. That third line, Skvortsov, Baikov, and Shepilev has just, they've just been tearing things up recently. How many points do we got here? All right, let's go, oh, not, not the calendar, jeez, okay, um, let's go over to the points. Yeah, let's go over, check the points right now, after one series in the finals. Yeah, Baikov, Shepilev, and Skvortsov. 12 points, 13, 15, Balderas over here, Kasputin, Makarov is getting himself assists, so that's good. Same thing with Fedosov, but Krutov with 8 points, Larionov with 7, I'm surprised. They're not showing up in the playoffs. They're not. Jeez, okay. Um, let's go back to the calendar here, do some more simulating. I'm sorry this is a long video, but we needed to get this one done. Please, I just, n we just need to win this one. Okay, okay. First period of game two, 
Okay, we got one. Skvortsov again. Jeez, okay. All right, if we lose this one. Okay, no, Pervikin. Yes, okay. Overtime again. Oh my goodness, look at the shots. 42 to 19. Please just finish the game. And they win. Okay. I want to do one more thing here. I want to do one more thing here. I want to do some more line juggling. Not necessarily switching up the lines, but I want to give guys who have been playing better more opportunities. And this will actually help out Krutov, Larionov, and Makarov as well, because having these guys on the third pairing, these guys are going to be going up against grinders. So if they could really just like find ways to score against grinders, then we'll be good. And these guys, Skvortsov, Baikov, Shepilev, they've been playing really well. So... Yeah, okay, let's continue. Let's continue. Game 3 in Boston. We've been playing really well on the road. So, I really want this win right here. First period, 0. Okay, second period, 1-1. One, one. Who got the goal? Krutov on the third line. And then David Krejci on Tretiak. Okay, shots are about even. Simulating through. Okay, get to 4. Okay, there you go. Yes! Skvortsov! Again, and Makarov! Alright, that change benefited both of those lines. Our middle six tearing things up. Alright, Bergeron got one. It's not over yet. It's not over yet. Make it to four. Oh no! Schaller! Oh no, we're going to overtime again! We're going to overtime again! Oh my goodness, finish the game. And Jake DeBrusque for the second game in a row gets the overtime winner. Oh no, we're gonna lose, aren't we? We're gonna lose, aren't we? Oh my goodness. Let's just get right into it. Game four. Still, TD Garden, we've been playing really well away. Kasputin, all right. One nothing, one nothing. There we go. Zhluktov, Makarov, three nothing. It's tied up now. All right, boys. All right, boys, we're back in Moscow. We haven't been playing well at home. We've been losing a lot of home games, so. Yeah, okay, um, jeez, let's go, let's go. Soviet army, everybody over there is really hyped for what's going on right now. Simulate the first period, it's 2-1. Balderis, first line right winger, getting things done, simulating through. Skvortsov, once more, gets the empty net, and we've got two games to lose it. We're up, we're up. 3-2 in the Stanley Cup Finals against the Boston Bruins. Where have I heard this before? Uh, uh, okay. For the last games, I actually kind of want to make one more change. Let's just bring everything to where it was before. Bring everything to where it was before. These guys gotta go out with a bang, honestly. Because it, it's possibly one of the last games of this season. Let's just get right through it here. First period, first period, let's go. Krutov, first line. Okay, there we go. Schaller ties things up. All right, second period. Helmets Balderis on the second line once again. And then Skvortsov right into the period. Coach Tikhonov makes a really risky move starting out that third line. And the Vancouver, not the Vancouver Canucks, the Soviet Red Army is up. 3-1 with eight minutes to go in the third. If they win this, they're getting the cup. Let's simulate ahead. We finally did it. Finally, we finally have a cup in one of these season mode videos. Trechiak shut the door, Baikov, Balderis, each getting points, crucial ones at that. And the Soviet Red Army have done it. They've done it. Season mode is now complete. Let's go over here. Uh, let's see the player stats of the playoffs, see how things were spread out. Baikov, my goodness. Almost a point-per-game player in the playoffs. Third-line center, naturally, just great. Shepilev and Skvortsov, that third line was amazing. Balderis, he got himself a lot of points. Kasputin, Makarov, Krutov, Fedosov. Where is Kasatonov? Kasatonov only got six points in that? My goodness. Larionov only got nine? I'm surprised. But other than that... Other than that... We really did deserve that victory because our team was hands down the best one. Goaltender stats, what was it like? 9-3-7 save percentage in the playoffs and a 1-8-1 for Trechiak. My goodness. Why did I feel like we were going to lose? My gosh. My gosh. Okay. Okay, so all that's left to do is look at the awards in this season and then we should be good to go for this video. Let's go over the awards. 
Stanley Cup, yep, Red Army, Red Army, Red Army, and the Boston Bruins, okay. Art Ross, Ovechkin, okay. What was the heart like? Was it Ovechkin? Yeah, it was Ovechkin. Did Kasatanov win the Norris? He did. I, I got it right. The plus minus plays into the James Norris in this video game. I believe they take the multipliers. So they multiply the plus minus by the points, and whoever ends up with the highest result is the James Norris. So it's Kasatanov this year. Lady Bing, Eric Carlson, yep, okay. Calder, Larionov, doesn't really matter. Con Smythe, Vladislav Tretiak. Vesna, Vladislav Tretiak. Jennings, Vladislav Tretiak. Master Tidnate Schmidt, Bergeron, Selke, Ovechkin, Ovechkin. Okay, so it was a good year for Russia in the NHL this year. Hope you guys enjoyed this CCCP history lesson on what we got with the Soviet Union's hockey team. Twitter, Google Plus, you can download controls like National Wrestling Gaming, and... Bye.